Hi, Training for Warriors Familia. I am Rob, the head coach of Training for Warriors Basin, and I'm super excited to show you our new Warrior Flow. And the new Warrior Flow is just a sequence of all the mobility drills put down together. I gotta, and I'm gonna show you how this needs to be done. I'm gonna give you some focus points, I'm gonna tell how many repetitions you do, and I do this just in real time. But the crazy stuff about the mobility drill is when you do this flow, when you perform this flow, before you start on your warm up, you gotta feel you're ready to rock and roll, ready to train. So here we go, we're gonna start off with a shin box switch, and that's an easy one. I always like to perform these drills on my socks, on my bare feet, so the shoes go out. And we start with the shin box switch. Easy on with this one. Just sit up nice and tall. Pull your back knee up. Your front knee will follow. You just go for 10 repetitions. You try to open up the hips. You immediately can feel Okay, the tenth repetition, that was a good one. The next one is a shin box kick through. You just sit up nice and tall, brace the core, flex the arms forward, and just gotta bring up the back leg, pointing forward, kick through. And I always go for like five repetitions on the right side, and I'll take five repetitions on the left side. Okay. If you do this mobility drills, don't go in a rush. Always take your time. Always feel what is the form of the body today. So if I go train after this, I can, uh, I can adapt my training to how my body feels. It's a real, I you say in English, that's a real important thing to do. Yes, okay. Now next one is the shin box with the overhead rotation. So, one arm horizontal from the back leg, with the other one reach nice and tall. And every time you rotate, you exhale. So I go for five repetitions on the left side, and five repetitions on the right side. Okay, this feels kind of good. Some rotation. Horizontal, the other one's to the ceiling. Nicely exhale. Keep the head position like one second. If you prefer, you can go for two seconds. And I feel kind of loose, so I just do it for one second. Next one is for the hips, loosen up the hips. Fire hydrants and the hip circles. I always go for five repetitions each side. I keep a nice tall posture, neutral spine. Just lift one leg up off the ground. Contract the glutes one or two seconds. And make sure your arms are flexed, extended, completely locked elbows. So five. Five hydrants, then I go for three, easy on, big circles, keep a 90 degree in the knee, in the ankle, I make three circles backward, and now I go three circles forward, three, okay, just switch position, it's ideal to open up the hips, Activate the glutes, nice basic position, and start working. Okay, five repetitions of the fire hydrants, and I go back to three backward circles and three big forward circles. Keep the elbows locked in this position, otherwise you're going to compensate and that's not ideal. Yes. 
So next one is a half kneeling hip flexor stretch, especially for the hip flexors. Always start with a proper setup, a good base, brace your core, bring your arms overhead, contract your glutes, bring it to the end position and back. Go for five repetitions from the right side and five repetitions on the left side. That's it, other side. Make sure you contract the glutes. That improves the quality of the stretch of the movement. Fifth one and the last one. So five repetitions each side. Now the next one is our frog stretch. Ideal for uh, doing the four squats, open up the hips. The basic setup, knees apart, inside of the feet against the ground. I lay down on my elbows. I keep, keep a nice neutral position of my back. I look to the ground and now you bring back your glutes pointing to your ankles. Easy arm. Always avoid pain in this movement. Just feel the stretch, loosen up the body. And with this one I always aim for like 10 repetitions. Don't go rush too hard. It's not how fast you can do the movements. It's more about quality of moving. Go for eight, go for nine, and I immediately feel that my range of motion is getting bigger and bigger. Okay, loosen it up a little bit. You can feel immediately that the hips are become more loose and loose. So the next stretch is our cat cow. Always do like 10 repetitions of this one. Proper setup, just make a big rounding, chest to the, the knee, get entangled. Bring your chin to the chest, look upwards to the ceiling. And try to do this real smoothly, real softly. Don't go too far on this one, just easy on it. Keep the elbows locked and feel how your spine goes in the extension, thoracic extension. For me this feels great, upper chest, it becomes more loose and loose every rep I do. So next one, the pigeon stretch, also a good one, especially for the glutes. I always go for 10 repetitions total, 5 on the left side, 5 on the right side. And I start off in a plank position. So I take basically plank position, I bring my knee between my hands, I lay down on my elbows, I relax for two seconds, I come up, switch leg, easily down, relax, exhale as you go down, two seconds, and we're just gonna do like 10 repetitions. Remember, no rushing, take your time, feel what your body is trying to tell you. Maybe you did some heavy deadlifts yesterday and your glutes are screaming, hey sir, you did some heavy deadliftings. Then you know you try to loosen up and exhale and come into the stretch. Number eight, you go for number nine. Last one, best one, number 10. Okay. It's a good one for the glutes. So the next one is the kneeling scapular circles. 
The first sequence was about the hips. Now we go back working further on the shoulder movements, especially scapula control. Kneeling position, straight up tall, arms extended forward, bring the scapula in the back pockets. Now we're gonna make circles with it. One, two, three. Make sure you brace your core. You got your elbows locked. And this one, especially 10 repetitions. Eight, nine, ten. Okay. That feels great. Okay, so the next one is our half kneeling shoulder circles. Don't rush on this one, take your time and always avoid pain. So, proper setup, half kneeling position, keep the brace, brace the core, glutes are squeezed, completely extended arm, bring him upwards, make a big circle. I go for five repetitions on the left side. Five on the right side. And that feels great. We got a good range of motion in my shoulders. Some of your students may not have good range of motions. So cue this one always like pain is not good. Always avoid pain in this one. Five, okay. The shoulders are ready for overhead pressings. <laughs> so the next one that we're gonna do, I'm gonna look at my paper, is the, the four scap glides. The horizontals and the verticals. And the easiest one to see this, I'm gonna do it in a side position, proper setup. You got your uh, spine in a neutral position. And you're gonna press away the scapula and you're gonna bring them back to each other. I go for 10 repetitions, good scapular control, keep your head nicely neutral on your spine, just activate your scapulas, 6, 7, 8, the elbows are completely locked, it's just the scapulas that are moving. Okay, that was the 10 repetition. Now we're gonna go for the vertical. So with this one, same position, same setup. But now I'm gonna pull my scapula in my back pockets and I'm gonna pull them up to my ears, back pockets, ears. And this one goes again for 10 repetitions. Then the last one, okay, that was a part of scapular control. Now the next one is our upwards and downward facing dog. This is my favorite exercise, it's the most bang for buck. You start off in the plank position, you put your feet wider than shoulder width. And from here on, you're gonna press your chest towards your ankles. You're gonna bring your hips down to the ground, fully extend. And again, this one, we're gonna go for 10 repetitions. Number seven. Eight. Nine. Last one, best one, 10. So if I do this one, I make a pace, but don't rush it. Take your time, feel what your body has to tell you. Just make it a good smooth movement. Next one is the shoulder abduction with the thumbs externally rotated. It's an easy exercise, you sit in a kneeling position, make yourself tall, brace your core, you bring your arms horizontal up and you're going to turn your thumbs backwards, externally rotated. 
We're gonna go for like five small forward circles. Four, five. You stop and you're gonna bring five backward circles. Feel how your scapula responds to this. Bring them together and separate them. Last one, okay. That feels quite good after the upward downward dog. Yes. The next one, this is a sequence, especially for the shoulders. We're gonna do the I, the Y's, the T's, and the W's. Most of the time when I cure this one to my students, I tell them go like 10 repetitions. Every exercise you do 10 repetitions. And right now in this flow, I'm gonna show you five repetitions of each exercise. And we start off with the eyes. So, flat on your belly, extend it out overhead. You're just gonna bring up the hands above the ground for five repetitions. Keep the core braced. One, two, three, four, five. Now for the next one, the Y's, you're gonna bring your arms a little bit further out of each other. Same drill, four brace, two. One, two, three, four, five. The next one is the T's. Bring them straight near the body. Same drill, four brace. One, two, three, four. Last one, best one, five. The last one is the W's. Bring the elbows near to the body. Hands above the shoulders, same drill. Poof. One, two, three, four, and five is the last one. If you do this circuit, always make sure to contract at least one second. If you need more, you can do like two seconds, but you're gonna feel it harder in the shoulders, especially the back shoulder uh, muscles and the rotator cuffs. But that's good, that's what you wanna have. So the next one, you're gonna perform the sideline archer. One of my favorites, just to bring opening in your front position. It's a great exercise. You're gonna start up the side of the body, you pull up the knees 90 degrees and the hips, Fully extended arm. Imagine you're holding the bow, you're pulling on, you're bringing back to down, stick your arm through, and you just come back to the start position. I always go for five repetitions on my right side and five repetitions on my left side. And this one needs to be done smooth, soft. Follow. Your body, don't rush on this one. Ooh, last one. Okay. Always come back to your start position. No half reps. You don't do them with deadlifts or bench press. We need to do them with mobility drills. So the other side, bring the knees up, land down, smoothly on the grass, pull back, poof. stick the arm through, and Come back to the start position. Again, five repetitions. Last one, best one, number five. And back to start position. So that was a sideline archer. Now the next one that we're gonna do is for some ankle mobility. It's the half kneeling ankle mobility drill. Many of your students, they gonna have like real stiff ankles. Now, this is a drill everybody needs to do. It. I always say 10 repetitions each side. 
But if you get like new students, let them do 20 repetitions. You drive the heel down in the ground, you're pointing your knee before your toes and you come back. 10 repetitions, you're going for, you're aiming for quality. You hold in one second or two seconds in the end positions. But always remind, driving the heel down in the ground. Some of your students, they're gonna show off lifting the heel. That's not what we're searching for. You want to stretch like uh, soleus, you gotta drive the heel down in the ground. And this is 10, okay. Switch side. Of course, we do 10 repetitions on the other side. Basic setup. The heel drives on the ground and go forward. So I immediately feel like a slight difference between my left and my right foot. It's not my best angle. I once injured this one with stupid running. A tired foot. So after after a year I still feel it. Okay, number nine. Last one, best one, number ten. Yes. Next one that we're gonna do, it's one for the neck, it's a good one, upper spine. You just sit in a kneeling position, make yourself real tall, extend your arms besides your body, and you're gonna turn your thumbs to the back. Externally rotation of the upper arm, you're gonna lock your upper back. From this position, you're gonna start moving your head around in big circles. You go left, you go right. I always aim for 10 repetitions. You should feel pain free. If somebody got pain, make the circle a little bit narrow. And if it still hurts, go perform it. Six, number seven. Don't go too fast, otherwise your head starts to spin. And don't forget, to external rotation of the upper arm so you keep your upper back in a stable position. Yeah, that's a good one. Ooh, it always feels good for my neck. Next one. It's my most difficult uh, mobility drill. It's the wrist figure eight. You just go for 10 repetitions left cycle, 10 repetitions right cycle. But I always need to do this real calm. You sit in a kneeling position, tall posture, you're bringing your arms, you lock them to the side of your body, and you're gonna make a figure eight with your wrists. And if I do this in a rush, in a hurry, this will no, no longer be a figure eight. So easy on 10 circles. And then we go for 10 circles in the other direction. And this is the point where I need focus. Okay, this one we finish with 10 repetitions. So your wrists, they got to be mobile too for like animal movements, maybe for front squats, they got to stay mobile too. Next one, some kneeling wrist flexions. This one is a little bit harder, but if you take control, you follow the range of motion of your body, you stay out of the pain zones, you're gonna feel this is a good drill. For the wrist flexion, just 10 repetitions. You put your hands underneath the shoulders, fingers point to the knees, and now we're gonna drive backwards, slowly, easy on, and we come back forward. Down, slow, and come back forward. Try to avoid pain. Don't overstretch on these ones. 10 repetitions is the cue. Releasing the tension, the flexor of your underarms. And if one of your students can sit in this position, bring the fingers almost against the knees. And then you get a whole different feeling in the underarms. So this is also possible. But if you got real good wrist mobility, you bring them up. And you're gonna do it from there on. That's it.
always shake your hands loose because you can feel in the underarms, in your structure, the architecture of your hands, you will feel this one. Next one, one of my favorites, the pretzel stretch. It's lying down on the ground. You also go for 10 repetitions total, but I perform five on the left side, five on the right side. This one is an important one for students that are like real stiff, students that have like a, a sitting uh, profession. If you let them perform this one, it will be a difficult one to perform. But you need to start doing them to become loose. So side position, the upper back, I grab it with my down arm, the down leg, I take the toes with my upper arm, I put some stretch on the quadriceps, I'm going to activate the glute, the quadriceps are stretched, now I'm going to lay down on my left shoulder, I'm going to inhale, exhale when I rotate with my shoulder to the ground, from here on. Hold for two seconds and come back. Always keep the tension of the quadriceps most of the time. People they are going to start focusing on the rotation and going to loosen up the tension on the quadriceps. And that's an important movement of the stretch. So we're going to take the other side, wrestle stretch. Grab the knee, grab your toes, stretch the quadriceps, activate the glute, inhale, and exhale. This is one of my favorites. This wrestle stretch always feels great. Upper thoracic, the hips, the glutes, the quadriceps, it's a good exercise. Now the next one is the deep squat, the hamstrings with overhead reach. And this one is a little bit trickier to do. You put your feet in squat position, sole, shoulder weight, keeping the toes a little bit outward. You grab your toes, squat down, and you're gonna lock your knees with your elbows in between. And in this position, your deep squat, you're just gonna rotate to the ceiling, look to the hand, the other one, exhale, grab your toes, stick your butt in the air, you got a little tension on the hamstrings, and come down. That was one repetition. <sighs> that was number two. This was number three. We go for four. And this is the fifth repetition and also my last repetition. You can do this for five repetitions, eight repetitions. Okay, and relax. Sometimes I do like 10 repetitions for this one. It depends on how my legs feel, hamstrings and my hips. Because this stretch isn't the easiest one. But how can you make them easy? Practice more. Practice to become better. Next one is a side lunge with a thoracic, with a T-spine rotation. So a side lunge with a T-spine rotation. Also a little bit harder because you're gonna feel isometric power from the legs. And how are we going to start? Feet apart, tall posture, arms before your body, chest high. You're going to squat down on your right, hands to the ground, rotate, reach to the ceiling, look to your head, and come back. Squat down on the other side, make sure your back is neutral, your back is straight. That was one. You go for number two. Yep. And 
this feels real good on the inside of my legs. Good stretch. Number three. So when I do this one, left and right is one repetition. Okay, that was exercise three. I'm gonna finish up with five repetitions. Straight back. Number four, drop down. The last on the right, the last one on the left. And then we got five repetitions. Come back up. Shake your legs so they are a little bit looser. Because this one you're gonna feel, especially on the inside, but also completely the quadriceps is under tension. So now, we are on the last one, the last mobility drill of the warrior flow. It's our world greatest stretch, and this is absolutely my favorite one. The most bang for buck. You start off in a plank position. A good plank position, you bring your feet you're beside your hand, you're gonna rotate, look to the hand, you grab your toe, bring him back, hamstring call stretch, come back to the begin position, plank, switch leg, rotate, grab your toe, bring it back down, and that was two, okay. You're gonna make six repetitions. Number three. Okay. This is number four. Last one is the best one. Always end your session, end your mobility drill in your starting position. No half reps, you only do the good reps. So hey guys, this was Coach Rob from TFW Bearson. This was the complete warrior flow. So what can you do with this? It's like easy. I always try to motivate every student. When you come for training, do the complete warrior flow. And of course some do, some does the flow, some people don't do the flow. But how can you get your students excited about the flow? Show them that you're doing the flow. Video yourself doing the flow. Post the video on your private page. Hey, go for day one mobility, day two mobility. Do like 30, 40, 50 videos each day of your mobility drills. You're excited about it and your students are gonna follow you. Now, how can you implement this for your training sessions? What do we do in base? So if somebody comes in on strength day and they feel they got like tight hips, just take a few drills from the hip sequence. If they got like an overhead press involved, take a few of the scapular drills. Hey, and, and make a shorter, a shorter one, like five minutes, six minutes mobility session. Do that before you start on your jumping jacks and you feel your or your body is ready to rock and roll. But if you can always do the whole warrior flow and even on days that you don't train i got students they want to train more and i always recommend them like if you don't train and you want to do an extra training day get yourself the warrior flow start off with some five minute breathing exercise to become relaxed relax the body and then start off with your warrior flow take your time do like a little bit more repetitions and you're like 30, 35 minutes uh, going for a training, and that counts as a training. You can see this like a mobility training. This is as even, uh, how do you say, this is like, this is important. Mobility training is important, like you got your strength training, like you got your conditioning training. You gotta see this like a piece of training. So, 
But guess what? I'm always excited about mobility drills. I hope you enjoyed it. Now start working on your own warrior flow and go coach with pains in your neck. How are you